Today I'm going to show you how to make a better Beta FPV 95X. I recently purchased this Beta FPV 95X. I was really excited to get this quad. The 85X that I already have just doesn't have the carrying capacity that I'm looking for to do indoor video shoots for real estate. The problem is when you get this, you're all excited and then the it sets in that it's just missing a few things. First thing is, is when you go to set the quad flat on the table here, it doesn't sit flat. It's because they've just repurposed the top plate that holds the camera as a bottom plate, which really doesn't work on the pusher style quad. So the first thing I did is I jumped in the Tinkercad and I designed me a new bottom plate. On my bottom plate, I made it out of TPU, so it's flexible, has some impact absorbing. And as you notice, the quad actually sits flat. Now, what I've done is I actually designed three different bottom plates. I've got the one that I like that's like the OEM, so it lets a little air in, acts like a wind scoop. I made one totally solid, which actually will work because there is an air gap in here. So the flight controller will still get plenty of air. And then I made one totally open for those of you who are concerned about weight. All three of these designs with the STL file and the G code for an Ender 3 uh, 3D printer will be in the description below. All the parts that I'm talking about, all the codes and all the STL files will be in the description. So no worries about that. So I got that all designed. Then I moved on to putting the XM Plus FR Sky receiver in it. Well, in the past, uh, these don't really have much room in it, so you just put clear heat shrink on the XM Plus, and then you just let it float around inside. Well, I'm one of those guys who kind of likes everything nailed down and tight and strapped and so on and so forth. So what I did is I designed this little TPU mount where now you don't even have to put any um, clear heat shrink on it to protect it so you don't have any shorts. It literally slides right into this mount. As you notice, it's offset here. The reason I offset it is so when you plug in your USB connector for Betaflight, you still have access to it. So you actually have a clear path to plug in for Betaflight, which that's one of the things a lot of manufacturers forget about. And I had mentioned iFlight earlier on their Mega B and Green Hornet and on the other quads like that. You can't get in there, so you have to use a 90 degree adapter. And that's just, it's just a pain in the ass. That's what it boils down to. So. That is a good design on this. Now, the next thing that I did was go, well, where am I gonna do with the antenna tubes? I also noticed the VTX itself, the mount just wasn't holding it properly. The factory one, the print is terrible. It's not designed right. It doesn't give enough room for it. And as you notice, the VTX on this one is sitting up at a slight angle like it should be. So when you're flying, you get a better uh, vision signal or uh, radio frequency signal from your, your antenna. The other thing I did is I added two tubes to it. So the RX tubes will go out and you can see they, they hold quite nicely here. So you're not gonna have any low RSSI on your, uh, your quad here. The next part I designed was a stronger VTX camera support. What I did, the factory mount is this little spindly piece here, and it has a lot of shape to it, which gives you jello. So I just took the same basic design that the factory had, and then as you see, made it four times fatter. And then I added a couple of little standoffs in here so it's not squashed around the camera quite as bad. So I've got that on there. The next thing I did uh, actually on that too as well, before I continue on, the screw holes in this, you're gonna say, well, they're too large. Well, the reason I made them too large is that you can use an extra cap screw that comes with the propellers. Of course, we all probably have a bunch of those laying around because you can reuse them. But this way you don't have to mess around with these little teeny Phillips screws that are really hard to get in and out. You can actually use your Allen wrench and turn these in tight. So the camera mount here, as well as the Insta360 Go mount are gonna use a regular two millimeter Allen cap screw that is the same ones that you use with the propellers. What I also did here is on the 4S pigtail, it flies loose, I don't like that. So what I did is I designed this TPU mount here 
that clips over the strap. It's quick removable here, so if you don't want it on there, you can put it on or if you want to move it around. The other thing that I did is I used Umagrip as the battery pad here. And there's an Umagrip light and a standard Umagrip. I chose the standard Umagrip on this because it gives a little bit of height here on the, the pad here. And the reason I wanted that is when you put the battery on there, now we have a slight gap here. So the VTX gets some airflow across it. And of course, we've all probably had problems with VTXs overheating on the bench or while we're sitting there adjusting our PIDs or something like that. One thing that I do like about this Uma Grip material is I don't have a strap on here. It's fresh, put it on there, it holds the quad. One trick that I've also found, a lot of people don't like this Uma Grip because they say, well, when it gets dirty, you can't clean it. We've all watched the videos on how to clean it. The best way I've found to clean it is if you take the top plate off your quad, and on this one, it's a little bit harder because the VTX is attached, but on most quads, just take your top plate off. Put it in your kitchen sink, put a little Dawn dishwashing detergent on it, scrub it around, let it dry. It will be just like brand new, clean, spick and span. Because we all dread the fact when we crash, we crash into the, the grass and the, <laughs> here in the Georgia clay, it gets really messed up. And it's just hard to get it cleaned up again. And that'll do the trick for you, a little Dawn dishwashing detergent in the sink. So I think that concludes everything we have here. We have our mount for the Insta360 Go. I'll include my uh, surround for this as well. On my Tiny Hawk videos, I talk about this mount and how I designed it. Uh, it's a quick release mount that just pops into the top of the camera here. So, and you notice I like it vertical. The reason I like this vertical is that in the FPV stabilization mode, you get a better horizon shot than in flow state stabilization. That's in the Insta360 Go Studio. I use Premiere Pro to edit my videos and you're limited to what you can do if you use the raw beta FPV, excuse me, not beta FPV, but Insta360 Go uh, format files. And this makes it a lot easier for me to edit if I use the camera vertical. Hopefully this is, uh, helped you all out to make a better flying Beta 95X, make it clean, uh, make it easier to fly for you. One last thing in closing, for those of you that want to use the standard Insta360 Go mount camera, the factory print that they supply is, is a terrible print, just like they're famous for their terrible prints. I'll provide the factory STL file, which you can get off of the Beta FPV website, but I'm also going to provide the G code for the Ender 3 Pro printer and the reason my prints turn out better, as you can see, it's a lot smoother and nicer. It doesn't have the hairs on it. That has to do with feed rates and different things. And I'll get into that in a future video. But the main reason is I changed the Z seam. And you can see on this part here, the Z seam I put at the bottom. That allows to have a nice continuous path around the part. So you have a nice smooth finish on the part. Hopefully these tricks have helped you. I do appreciate you watching. Thanks again for all your support and your comments, and we'll see you next time.